guys. Welcome to the show. Today, I have Gabrielle Clements. She is the author of Marriage is About Love, Divorce is About Money. Boy, oh boy, how true is that? Gabrielle, thank you so much for joining me. How are you? Very well, thanks. Nice to see you, Elsa. It's great to see you too. So, you know, just before we got on here, uh, I said, you know, what a, a terrible, great topic, you know, terrible that obviously nobody wants to go through divorce. Nobody gets married envisioning their divorce. And then obviously, if and when you get to that point, divorce is ugly. It is ugly. And now you're a divorce lawyer. You've seen it all, obviously. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I I no longer practice in the space. Um, I transitioned from being an attorney, a tax and divorce attorney, uh, transitioned to financial services to help people go through this divorce process and protect themselves financially. So um, that's where I came up with the book and my registered trademark, Marriage is About Love, Divorce is About Money, uh, because it, it, unfortunately, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, absolutely. Now, do you see or have you seen in your practice, is there one group or demographic that seems to get more negatively affected by divorce? Is it the men? Is it the women? Is it equal? It's not equal. And I would have said 10 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, I would have said the stay at home mom mm-hmm. is probably the the worse off in this in this case, um, with their facing divorce, if they stayed at home, they gave up a career. Um, but now what I'm finding is over the last five years, maybe seven years, the, the tides are changing, the tides are turning. And there are a lot of stay at home dads. Mm-hmm. And they're in a similarly situated position. So I'd say the demographic probably is, you know, the stay at home parent, the one who gave up their career, gave up their, you know, um, their graduate or postgraduate education um, to stay at home, take care of the kids and, um, and, you know, stop paying into Social Security, stop building their own retirement um, and stop building um, their career so that they could come back to it when, uh, when the, the parenting years are over. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, I have to be honest, that's so relatable. Uh, when I got divorced many years ago, I've since remarried. And, uh, you know, we all actually have a great, great relationship. There's kids involved, grown adults now, they're kids, you know, um, always kids to us. But uh, yes, I was a stay at home mom. That was the arrangement and the plan. And absolutely, 100% when, when that decision was made and, you know, those steps started, I was definitely in that position of, I don't know anything. I mean, I was, you know, I was very young when I got married the first time and had kids young. And and I thought that was my life. That was, that was what I was going to do. I didn't even, you know, terrible, but I didn't even think about what I was going to do. Even when the kids got older, you know, I just loved being a stay at home mom. And then when life changed, it, I, it was like a ton of bricks. I did not know uh, nearly a quarter, not even a fraction of what I needed to know financially. And uh, yeah, it was it was quite uh, a shell shock for me. Now, walk me through a little bit, if you will, some of the things that uh, someone will learn in your book. It's a step by step guide uh, through the legal and financial process. So some of the things that we'll find in there, if you could. So uh, The book is divided into three sections. So it's before the divorce, during the divorce and after the divorce. Mm -hmm. And, you know, leading up to divorce, making that decision and, you know, actually pulling the trigger on that meeting with attorneys, meeting with financial people. The first thing I tell my readers to do is to find a therapist because you don't want to use your financial person and you don't want to use your attorney as a, as as a therapist. So really get grounded in what you're doing and, and, and get a handle on what the process is ahead of time. Um, Then once you've, you've, you're starting to build your team and before the divorce stages, which is meeting with attorneys um, and also deciding on your process. What do you think is going to work best for you? So that's when we start to get into what the legal processes are. There's mediation, arbitration, litigation, uh, and really sort of, you know, deciding ahead of time or trying to decide ahead of time, even with your spouse, um, what's the outcome that we're looking for and what do we have to do in order to reach that outcome? So before the divorce, is getting your ducks in a row, finding out, you know, what is your mortgage? Um, what do you, what are your credit cards? What do you have in savings and retirement? What about life insurance? Um, you know, what about any trusts that you have, your state plans, um, you know, irrevocable trusts, revocable trusts? 
all these different components. Get a copy of your tax returns. It's all of getting your ducks in a row, finding this information, putting it in an organized place, such as a Dropbox, and maybe you know starting to pull things together from your cash flow. Uh, get a Quicken account, buy Quicken, and you know start to understand how much money is coming in and where it's going. And if you do this before the divorce, before any red flags uh, start, you know raising, then you can you know you might be able to get more information, and then you can start to ask questions. And then when you get into the divorce, then you are you're really taking stock of what are my marital assets. What, what is a marital estate and what's in my marital estate? Um, did you sign a prenuptial agreement? You're going to need a copy of that if you did. And more people are doing that these days um, for good reason. So we go through that whole process of choosing a process, choosing an attorney, and you know how to choose an attorney, what to ask an attorney and a financial person. So your team is really made up of your attorney, your financial person, your therapist, and maybe your child's therapist if you have younger children. Um, and, you know, you want to have someone at the table to speak on behalf of the kids. So we go through that whole process of what's the difference between the different um, the different types of ways to approach divorce. And um, and from there, getting to a settlement, what questions to ask and do your financial plan to determine whether or not the settlement that you are accepting or that's been proposed, is this really going to work for me? Um, we stress test it. We run the numbers and ask questions. And really, once you lay it out on paper, it all see the pieces of the puzzle start to come together. And we say, oh, there's something missing here. Or no, this could work. This might this might be a, um, a good settlement for me. And also taking stock of your emotions. Um, there's a there's a little story in the in the book, which we have little stories going through the book um, of, you know, fighting for the good. This happened to be a knife, which is probably shouldn't have used a knife as, a, as an object. But, you know, do we fight? How, how hard do we fight for, you know, the good frying pan or, you know, the, the, the rug that may have sentimental value, but could cost you thousands and thousands of dollars in lawyer fees uh, fighting for it when, you know what, in the end, if you do have kids, it's most likely going to end up with, with the kids. Um, if, if your ex is going to uh, you know, keep that in the family. Um, so it's really just taking check on taking stock of your emotions, keeping really putting your business hat on and understanding sort of, you know, what the cost benefit analysis is for some of the things that you're fighting for and, and take stock in that. And then throw after the divorce, what that feels like. So many of my clients say it's such a bittersweet day, the day that you go to court, it's the ending of, you know, an era, um, but it's a beginning of a new era. And what does that look like? So one of my first uh, components of this is to really start building your future today, even before you've started the divorce or initiated the divorce. What do you want your future to look like? And what do we have to do to get there? And if you keep checking in with the future, then you'll see, well, I don't even need that frying pan because I'm going to have a whole new set. Um, and you, it starts to makes sense in terms of why you're even getting this divorce anyway. So many of my, my, my clients say, I don't even remember why I began this process. It's become all about the process and they forget. And then they, they're reminded throughout that, yeah, this, this person that I'm divorcing is not the person I married. And once you accept that, uh, it'll be easier to move forward in a business, uh, business manner. I love that you have this, whole rounded approach of how you recognize everything that comes with it. So it's not, you're not addressing just the financial, you know, uh, aspects of it. you're dealing with the, you're addressing the emotional aspect of it too. And, and I have to admit, I kind of chuckled to myself as you were telling that story about fighting over the frying pan or, or, you know, material things. And, and I know if my ex watches this, and again, I tell you, we're, we're good friends, everything is good. Free. But I know he had the same first thought or he will have the same thought that I did. And it's that darn 1920s Chinese blanket chest that was 
<laughs> the, the, the sticking point for a period of time. And, and you're so right, you know, as you're talking, I'm reflecting on that whole experience and, and everything that you're saying is so accurate. And all I could think is, is if I only had a book like this back then, and I think about now, you know, cause this is what we do really everything that we hear to like personal experiences or things that we know. And, and, you know, sad to say, I, I have a, a pretty good list of friends and acquaintances who who could have or will be able to use this book you know pretty much immediately and um, my goodness I, I, it's kind of awesome what a game changer something like this is because it takes all the the um the emo well it doesn't take the emotion out but it kind of does take the emotion out or puts it in its proper place right yeah or you, you're getting a perspective when someone yeah. explains it through the way that this book does, it, it'll give you a perspective of, you know, really, if you're focusing on your future, which is why you want a divorce in the first place, you say, I don't like whatever this is. And it's no, I can't bear it anymore. Or I just don't want to live like this anymore. Or this doesn't feel right anymore. Well, focus on what you do want, not what you don't want. So what would feel better? You want to live, you know, somewhere else, you need a smaller house, you want more independence. Um, maybe you've met someone else, whatever it is, if you focus on what it is that's fulfilling you in the for the future, how you do want your life to 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 play out, then it starts to make sense and gives you perspective on your current situation and what fits into your new life and what does not. And that's why a lot of people say they, you know, they lose friends, or he got the friends and or she got the friends and, and, and I, you know, I didn't, well, that's okay, because that's, that's part of the old life and the new you going forward, you're going to have a whole different friend group. So it's really don't focus on the loss. I know that's easy to say I've been through divorce too. Um, but you know, don't, but focus on the future. And that will give you hope and, um, and, and give you a, a picture, a puzzle to put together on your terms um, going forward. And that's what drives, that's what drives a lot of people is, is this is what I do want. I don't want this anymore because this is what I want. Focus on that as opposed to, um, you know, what, what you're giving up because apparently, and for, and it's harder for people who didn't initiate the divorce. So if they're being told by their spouse that they want a divorce, that they're not happy, um, probably deep down, they had some, you know, struggles and strain around this, um, this marriage as well. And to embrace that. Uh, it's hard when you come to terms with it with your therapist, then you start to look further into your future and start building a, a future that you do want that fits you with people who do want to partner with you and are ready to, you know, to, to build the future together. So important. So important. You're so right. And, you know, when you're in the thick of it and going through this divorce and there's, you know, so much bitterness and hurt and anger and vengefulness and, uh, and all of those things, you know, it's, it's, you can't see the trees through the forest kind of thing. And all you're focused on is, is all of that hurt and all of that anger and, uh, focusing on the, the bright spots or the potential for a brighter, better future, uh, is really, really hard to do. And, and I think, you know, that this is something that really helps like you said, put things in perspective and, and kind of makes, uh, makes the reader, I would think, hopefully kind of pause and say, okay, hang on, hang on. I am so immersed and so wrapped up that I can't see anything, but, you know, tunnel vision right now. And, you know, as, as we, as we know, there's a, what's the saying, there's a thin line between love and hate. And, and I think it's so hard for people to wrap their, their brains around how, um, someone can love you so much and then that turns to hate and venture and just awful things, the awful things that people do to each other. And, um, you know, so putting that focus in the right spot and where it needs to be to be productive uh, is is just invaluable. It's just incredible. And and I've known people who have gotten so immersed in the bitterness and the anger and the pettiness um, that comes that just seems to automatically come along with divorce. And, um, you know, I think one of the worst things that happens and um, I was fortunate, actually, I have to say in my divorce, this just didn't really happen. But I think what a lot happens is that the friends and family start chiming in and giving their suggestions. Right. Did you I would imagine you saw a lot of that? Yes. Yes. 
Absolutely. And that's, that's why I recommend that you get a therapist, get a support group. I mean, a support group, because you're hearing the stories of other people, they're sharing their, their, their fears and their experiences. And um, it gives you a roadmap into oh, my, 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 my divorce isn't going so badly, or I don't want to be like that person. Or, you know, there might be a solution that someone can share with me. So even more importantly, including a, a therapist, if you can put together a, a support group, uh, just to know that you're not alone, because it becomes very lonely. And your, your friends and your family, if they're not going through this, if they're just watching you go through this and hearing you and you pick up the phone to complain about a judge or a process or your spouse, they're going to get, they're going to have you know, friend fatigue after a while. I mean, it's, it's, you need a divorce buddy and, you know, someone who's going through it with you or, has, you know, at the same time. Uh, but, you know, you're, again, your friends and family will tire out very quickly and then they'll become critical. Uh, well, why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you ask for that? Or what is your attorney saying about that? I don't understand because they're not going through it. So they can't, they can't totally, um, you know, appreciate the decisions, the emotional changes that you're going through, the threat to your family finances and your fortress, your home, um, in a way that someone who's going through the process with you in a support group um, can 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 appreciate that. So, um, so therapists uh, as you're building your team, a support group as you're building your team. Um, and then the best attorney, accountant, financial person. Um, and, and I promise you'll get through this. It, it won't be easy, but it'll be worth it. That's. Oh, that's so true. And I've, you know, I've told people over the years that, you know, people are always amazed that my divorce was ugly. The first year that we went through this whole process, that that whole year's time um, from, you know, decision to signing the papers uh, it was ugly. We were not nice people to each other. It was, it was rough. And people who live that experience with us are so amazed that we're, where we're at now. And, uh, you know, for us, it, it came down to a very simple thing for us. It was, we have, we have two daughters and they didn't ask for any of this. You know, they didn't ask to be part of this. And, and that's kind of the message I, I try when there's kids involved. That's the message I try and, and put across. They didn't ask for any of this. So don't make them suffer any more than, than you know, the breaking up of a family. Uh, don't make them suffer more for that. And, uh, you know, we did get to that point where we said, you know what? They're suffering because we can't act right enough. And right. we called a truce and, you know, wasn't, I tell people we weren't instantly friends. We didn't just say, okay, we're done, you know, hating each other. And now we're going to be friends. It was a slow progression over time. And, uh, you know, so I, I do like to tell people that, you know, you don't necessarily have to do what we do. We're probably a little bit, uh, extreme. We're like the Demi Moore, Bruce Willis version. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> of well, divorce, you know, and, uh, and, and it's great for us and that's what works, but my goodness, if you can at least be civil and, uh, and just get through those encounters and those experiences, because if there's children, they're in your life forever, you know, yeah. so you might as well make the best of it. Right. Well, you are going to see that your ex spouse, you know, time and time again, and they may marry someone else and you're going to have, you're going to be in business with them now. And you may marry someone else as you have. And, you know, I, I mean, life goes on and this becomes just a, a blip and something that happened. It doesn't need to define you. I do see, see some people, they do get stuck uh, because they're not reaching out and they're not getting support and they're not getting help or they stay in the area, which is very common, but they're they're dialed into every move that their ex is making. And that can be, you know, that can affect your mental health. I mean, just you, you have to find ways, find paths to, to make your own journey. Uh, remember, focus on that, on the future on what you want the future to look like. Um, and if, you know, if you, you're planning appropriately, um, then, you know, you should have enough money to do some of the things that you want to do. You might have to get a job. Some people, um, you know, at a certain age, they don't feel that they could or should. But I promise you, there's something that you can do. Um, and, you know, it just feels as though you, you just need a plan. You have to decide what you want, make a plan and follow through with that and make baby steps every day. Um, but getting through this process doesn't have to define you. It doesn't need, mean that 
you know, you're, as you mentioned, you're always going to, you know, hate your ex or this emotion ultimately will dissipate and you will move forward um, with help and a commitment to do so. Such sound, great advice. And, you know, like I said, I have to say it again. I love that this is such a well-rounded and balanced book about that whole process, you know, and, and again, not just the financial, but the emotional as well. And, you know, I, I think the two components, of, that is it in a nutshell, you know, the financial, the emotional, and how to navigate this whole process, because as anyone uh, going through it or has gone through it knows, this is a roller coaster. And, and I think this type of book kind of levels out those steep hills, you know, or those steep peaks and, and kind of smooths it out. of like, it's okay, <laughs> let's yeah. put everything in perspective. And, and uh, boy, oh boy, what, what a game changer, I think for people. Um, tell me a little bit about was when you wrote this book or when you had the idea to write this book, was there something specific, a specific case or, or thing that happened that made you say, you know what? people need help. <laughs> they need help figuring this out. Or was this like a long-term plan that you knew for a while? Yeah, it was a long-term plan. Um, you know, this, the registered trademark marriage is about love, divorce is about money um, just came to me years ago. Uh, and I have to say, I've been, I've been doing this for over 25 years, helping women and now men and women going through this process. And finally, I mean, I could I could write this book in two weeks. I mean, the content itself, from what I've put together over my years of experience in this area, both as an attorney and as a financial person, financial advisor, it, you know, it just the, the book writes itself from that perspective. And it's it's this is what you need to know. And so finally, I've been saying it for so long. I said, you know, I just have to put this in in writing so I can hand it to someone and say, this is what, what I'm going to tell you. But it's in writing here. Read it for yourself. And I work with people all over the country, all over the world. Um, so so place, you know, location doesn't matter. Every state has its own divorce and family law laws. Um, but Technically, they're 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 very similar. They're 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 very um, they're very much written in the same um, right in the same vein. But um, but but this is something that I've been. It's been my mantra for you know for years, and it, I've just seen basically the same situation over and over and over again. And um, oftentimes, it's one spouse wants a divorce, the other one may not. Um, they're blindsided. They don't know anything. Uh, they feel uh, outlawed. They feel outplayed. And they get to the end of their uh, of their process. They've signed an agreement, and then they have all the time in the world to to read it and understand it. And oftentimes. They can't believe that they signed something and 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 didn't understand it. Uh, but their lawyer said it was okay. But the lawyer the, the lawyer has forty other cases that they're working on. I love lawyers. I am a lawyer. I'm just saying it's you know you're one case in in a group of many, and um, you just want to make sure that you are making the decisions along the way. Take your time. Make informed decisions. Don't let anyone tell you you have until five o'clock tomorrow to make this decision. You can always file a continuance in court. If you have a court date, there are always options that you have because my goal was to, or is to have someone understand the agreement that they're signing. They may not like it, but they're going to understand it. And they're going to understand how they arrived at these at, at this settlement. Because another thing, people go back and second guess themselves. They say, oh, I wish I knew back then what I know now. I wish someone had told me. Or I, you know, if I had only done this, my life would be so different. And that's the worst feeling in the world. I remember, and I often have to say to people, remember when we talked about this and you said this, and they say, yes, that's true. So just so you know that you weren't blindsided. You know, just just knowing that you you knowingly and you were informed when you sign this agreement that you did it willingly, you made an informed decision, you made choices. And they get, let's get back to your mindset where you were when you made these choices and, and, and how you came to that decision. And then they can, they, they readjust it. But, but you know, the, the, the wave of emotion comes back, especially and often harder when it's over. It's like mm. the drama is over. And you look at the damage and you say, wow, I, 
how did I get here? Because it's it's a blur. People say, and maybe you went through this, Elsa. It's like a blur. And now it's over. And the, the, the clouds are clearing. The rain is stopping. The drama. And your attorney's gone. This person you may have spoken to every day for the last year and a half or at least every week. You know, they're gone. Your therapist may, may or may not still be around. Your support group might be gone. So, so you, you're going to be alone with your agreement. And it's my goal that you understand it. You understand the choices, the rationale, um, and what your options were. Um, because then you're going to get everybody commenting. Those, all those friends and family, they're going to come back and say, I can't believe you didn't get this. I can't believe you didn't ask for that. And then you start the whole process over again. So um, it's, you know, it takes a little while to get out from under um, this process, which is in the after divorce section. It's, um, you know, it's all about how to wrap things up. You have to do a new estate plan. Um, and, and and part of the process um, that I put in the book is to create a vision board. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that you can tangibly look at. And so when this is over, you can start, you know, you can continue to build out that vision board and start to see where you are just physically uh, and whether or not you're achieving and, and moving towards those visions in your vision board and maybe changing some things, maybe taking some things off the vision board and putting new things up. So um, so it's a real process of moving forward in your life, not allowing this divorce to define you. Um, and there is light at the end of the tunnel. I love it. I love it. And I know it sounds weird to say I love it when we're talking about divorce. But uh, I, what I love about it, of course, is that this is such a thorough uh, guide, essentially, of how to navigate this process and come out of it um, with your, you know, your finances and your spirit intact, basically. So I, I just think it's so amazing that you have written this book. I believe that it is going to change so many people's lives who read this and uh, just really get a grip on this whole process because absolutely you asked if I remembered certain processes and and or or lack of remembering and absolutely it was it was it's still a blur uh, I remember you know small things or maybe big things I guess I should say that just pop out and um and the thing I do remember mostly is just getting to that point where I was ready for it to be done and I was willing to sign anything like I just want to be yeah. done and I think that's very common right that's a very yes. common stage to get to especially when it's prolonged and ugly and dirty and you're just, you know, just so sick of the whole process that um, you, you may want to just sign anything just to be done and move on. And uh, I suspect that this, this book will help you kind of uh, level out on that and make sure that you're doing what you need to do. Yeah. And, and to not get to that point, to right. understand, not, you know, not allow yourself to get to the point, you can feel as though you have to get done and it's time and you're tired of paying attorney's fees for sure. Mm -hmm. But but don't get to the point where this this is a runaway agreement and a runaway process. Uh, and now you're playing catch up and you have until five o'clock to sign this. Uh, right. Because that the it never lightens up. I mean, it's more critical at that moment to truly understand your agreement because you're going to have plenty of time tomorrow and for the rest of your life to you know, review that agreement and wonder why you allowed people to push you around and give you a five o'clock deadline. Mm -hmm. Worst case, you, you know, your court case is going to get uh, is going to get re rescheduled. Uh, yes, there are ramifications of that, but you know, th you have to live with this agreement, yeah. and yeah. it's important not to get bullied into doing something at the last minute. Um, again, it may not change anything. I'm not saying you're going to get a better agreement because of it, but at least you're going to understand it and you're not going to regret, uh, you know, don't have any regrets around what, what you're, what you're signing. Um, you may not like it, but at least you're going to understand it and you're not going to regret it. You're going to understand how you got here because that only then will you be able to move on. I so find true. With my clients who are stuck, it's because, you know, they saw me after they, they their divorce is over, then we didn't get to go through this process. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that's, that's critical. So the financial, the emotional, the legal, 
process, everything is um, is addressed in the book. And so in your state, things might be different. We preface, I, I preface the book by saying it depends, which, you know, with any case, you know, there's no straight answer. It depends on your circumstance. Your divorce is not the same as everybody else's. So you have to find out what works for you in your case. You have different assets, different liabilities, different situation. Some people have special needs children. Some people have medical issues. So everyone's different. So you have to see what what's right for you within the confines of the family laws in your state. Absolutely. Gabrielle, tell me, tell everyone, I should say, where they can find your book and you, if you're doing any speaking engagements or book signings, or any of that good stuff. Yeah. So um, you can reach me. My cell is 781-910-4770. You can always reach me personally and see where I'm going to be. Um, I do have some book signings in Massachusetts uh, that are still being are still being set up. The book just came out last week. So uh, we're, we're, we're arranging for time uh, next month in March and April. So I will um, be putting that up as well. You can find the book on Amazon. You can put in the search bar, Marriage is About Love, Divorce is About Money, or you can put in my name, Gabrielle Clemens, uh, and buy the book there and reach out anytime. Outstanding. Gabrielle, thank you so, so much for coming on and sharing this book with us. And, um, you know, obviously we all wish that a book like this never had to be written, but we live in the real world and, uh, and this is the best way to prepare for really all aspects of what you're going to be navigating if you are unfortunately going through a divorce. Thank you so, so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. All right, guys, that's been our show. Go check out Gabrielle Clemens. Marriage is for love. Divorce is or about money. Hang on. Let me make sure I do it right. Hang on. Marriage is about love. Thank you. Marriage is about love. Divorce is about money. Perfect. Thank you. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Take care. Thank you. What? No, I'm I'm not going to make a video to show everybody all the books that I've written. No, it's it's so weird. That's so tacky. Like, who does that? I'm not going to do that. They don't. They don't care. They don't want to go on Amazon or, or my website and, and, and check them out. Why would they do that? Like, really? Why? I, I mean, it'd be great, but <sighs> yeah. Oh, <sighs> what is wrong with you? Sorry, I thought I canceled this subscription, and I still have it. I really need to figure out how to handle my finances better. Yeah, no, I used to have the same problem. I just use hiatus. Hiatus? Uh, It's super easy. I'll explain it to you. Just no more of those weird growly sounds, please. Download the app. You'll be able to see all your subscriptions and cancel the ones that you don't need or want. See which of your monthly bills are negotiable and Hiatus will negotiate for you. And you'll be able to set up a custom budget.